Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel. This is another video where I'm trying to show you Norway from another perspective, from the movie perspective. And that being said, I just wanted to remind you that this is another video of series. So make sure you watch the previous videos where I am discussing the movies that are filmed in Norway and also giving out some interesting facts uh, and a little bit of tour guiding about the places where these movies were filmed so that when you will be able to travel, you can actually go there and enjoy the beautiful country called Norway. For those who are new here, welcome, welcome in, dobra pozdravit, like me lukti. And uh, this is a video where I am actually telling you about the movies that were partly or fully filmed in Norway. Specifically, today's video is going to be about a movie that was completely filmed in Norway. And also, the plot is based on a novel that is written by a Norwegian writer. So at the beginning, I thought that this is going to be another video where I will be picking up some two or three movies and discussing everything related to Norway in that. And somewhere in the middle of my research, I understood that this movie is so full of Norway that I actually have to dedicate a whole video only to that. That being said, I wanted to add that in case you didn't like the movie, uh, please do not switch out the video because uh, this is not only about the movie and its production, it's also about Norway and I don't know if you know, but you might already have some kind of uh, feeling that I will be talking about the movie called The Snowman. As I mentioned before, it's based on a novel written by a Norwegian writer. It's a famous writer called Unesbu. This particular novel received very good reviews. So about the book and the writer. So Unesbu's book uh, Snømanen was published in 2007. Nesbu has sold millions of copies of his books in Norway. Uh, his works have been translated into more than 50 languages. And up to 2021, over 50 million uh, Nesbu's books were sold worldwide. I was, um, I was a bit reluctant to having uh, the Harry Hole novels made into movies, um, simply because I knew that from the moment that somebody had had been Harry on the big screen. That would be the the actor. That would be Harry's face, you know, in in, in people's minds. And maybe in my my own head. But now that they chosen Michael Fassbender, I'm uh, I'm quite relieved. <laughs> in a way, he's a um, he's a great actor. I I, I loved him in uh, in Shame and uh, some of the movies he did after that also. I I was happy that they. Uh, that they shot it here, but of course Oslo is probably one of the most expensive places in the world where you can shoot a movie. So they filmed it here and in some places just outside uh, Oslo. And in Bergen, of course. So you can consider this like an introduction to one of the Norway's uh, famous uh, current writers. So, and yeah, I wanted to add this information just so you understand how high the stakes were for Hollywood movie makers before starting to film Snowman. And so the movie called The Snowman was released in 2017. The leading role of the detective Henry Hall was uh, given to Michael Fassbender. Yes, we know him from Assassin's Creed and also as Magneto from the X-Men. And he has participated in so many uh, famous movies and TV shows. You know who is Michael Fassbender, most probably. I will not dive into a lot of details from the movie or the book, because I don't know if you have seen the movie or if you have read the book. Uh, there will be no such a spoiler, so you can safely watch this video further. Uh, but I just want to mention like the main plot line, which is basically that the detective Henry Hall has to solve a case of a missing woman whose scarf was found uh, uh, wrapped around a very scary snowman. Now some interesting facts about the movie. At the beginning, everybody thought that the director of the movie is going to be Martin Scorsese, but he dropped out in 2013 and the role of director after a year was given to a Swedish director, uh, Thomas Alfredson. 
Needless to say that the movie was trashed by the critics. Uh, however, uh, Thomas Alfredson said in interviews that the movie was made in quite a rush because he had to like jump in after Scorsese left his director's position. Our shoot time in Norway was way too short, we didn't get the whole story with us and when we started cutting we discovered that a lot was missing. It happened very abruptly, suddenly we got a notice that we had the money and could start the shoot. Actor Will Kilmer actually during the shooting of this movie was suffering from an enlarged thumb because uh, he had a recent throat cancer treatment and therefore we do not actually see his character speaking because it would make easier for the crew to dub uh, his uh, lines and actually whenever you hear Will Kilmer kind of speaking uh, all of it is dubbed. Michael Fassbender started to film in The Snowman only two days after Assassin's Creed was wrapped. I gotta say there's a shot in there where you don't have a shirt and he is in great shape for someone that drinks and smokes a lot. You don't have a shirt on I just came off Assassin's Creed. I did as best I could. I, honestly, I did no I didn't training. Even remember uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just joking. How could you forget? <laughs> so <laughs> sorry. Please, <geez. laughs> um, yeah, uh, you know, good point. I mean, I can't, there's nothing I can say about that. But also in the books, he's built pretty well for an alcoholic. I guess he's one of those wiry alcoholics, which you do find out there. The snowmen that you can see in the movie were actually made by Norwegian kids in a small town in collaboration with Design Ice from Drogsdat, Norway. Johnny Greenwood from the famous band Radiohead actually made a soundtrack for this movie, but I don't know why it wasn't actually even used for the movie. The filming of the movie started in 2016, obviously in Norway, and they filmed in several locations and each of these locations actually have some very good sightseeing places so I tried to pick out like the some of the most significant and I'm going to give you a little fact tour guiding. Everything started in Oslo so I will start with Oslo. The first time when Fassbender was noticed in uh, Oslo was when they were shooting a scene uh, in a tram. But the most important place I think I should mention in this video, and that was also a location uh, in this movie, is Oslo City Hall or Radhuset. Uh, and I'm gonna give you some details and some information about that. Radhuset houses the city council and administration of Oslo. The interiors of the Oslo City Hall were decorated by famous Norwegian artists. It is also a place where the Nobel Prize ceremony is presented every year on December the 10th. The building is a storybook of Norway's history and culture, and these historic tales unfold along the art-packed corridors leading to the main entrance. The main hall was decorated by two famous Norwegian artists. It's one of the capital's most iconic and definitely must-see objects for any tourist visiting Oslo. In other words, there is so much about Oslo and Norwegian culture. Oh, and don't forget to pay attention to the Oslo City Hall's Eastern Tower. It has 49 bells and the sounds and chiming of these bells uh, have always been a very important part of Oslo's life. And uh, sometimes they even have some bell concerts. But of course, if you are planning to go there and you need more information, I would seriously advise you to go to official pages of Oslo that are dedicated to the tourism. I will also leave the links uh, below in the description box. The episode where the main character Harry Hall wakes up on a bench uh, is actually filmed in a Frogner Park and uh, it's a very famous sculpture uh, place in Oslo. So what is Fragner Park? It's actually a public park, so it's available for everyone who wants to visit it. And uh, it's a part of uh, Frogner Manor, and the Frogner Manor actually houses Oslo Museum. Frogner Park is the largest park in the city, it covers 45 hectares, and the sculpture installation is the largest sculpture park in the world that is made by a single artist. And definitely it's also one of the most popular uh, tourist attractions. The park contains a sculpture installation that is called Vigeland installation and it is created by Norwegian sculptor uh, Gustav Vigeland 
and he made these sculptures within the time from 1924 up to 1943. It consists of sculptures and also some other objects like uh, fountains and bridges. But who is Gustav uh, Vigeland? He is a famous Norwegian sculptor and he not only created this installation in 1901 according to Vigeland's designs, the Swedish engraver Erik Lindberg created the medals of uh, Nobel Prize. And afterwards, uh, the filming crew moved to a place called Rücken. I beg your pardon if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Rücken is a town and administrative center of a tin municipality in Telemark, Norway. It is located in Gestjordalen and although it is small, it has a lot of things to offer for tourists. Worth mentioning fact is that this small town actually has already once attracted Hollywood because in 1965, uh, Kirk Douglas as the leading actor and all the filming crew was here to film the movie called The Heroes of Telemark. I'm not like intending to become yellow with some gossips, but uh, there was a rumor that Fassbender actually was living in a flat unrecognized and during the stay he was quite often visited by his that time girlfriend, Swedish actress Alicia Vikander. So now let's move on to the touristy thing that I enjoy more than gossips. So. For more than a century, people from all over the places are coming to the small town for several reasons. Rücken Falls is a famous landmark in Norway and has been portrayed by several famous artists. The place lies between two lakes. The area has good terrain for skiing and hiking. People do also ice climbing here. Go snowboarding and you throw yeah. snowballs and you Fantastic. skiing. Skiing. We're snowing. skiing. Yeah. Here? Skiing. He is snowing. now. Uh, uh, I, I, I just did it for the first time on this job. Really well. I mean, I enjoy it, yeah, which I think is the main thing apparently in life. <laughs> Michael has a certain way of, he it's goes a, straight. Yeah. You know? There's not much style. There's not much style. Not much style, really. I mean, I went uh, as many okay, times as we could, yeah. Mm. We were so filming in a place fun. called Rukan. It's very beautiful. And I think because of the light, the way the light falls there, you know, uh, it's so far north, and you have the long summers, of course, and then you at the winter time, you've got these you know, short days and long nights. And I think the way the light falls there and the beauty and, and just the silence. An interesting fact, between March up to September, Rukian uh, actually lies in the shadows of the mountains, so they do not get any sun from that. In 2013, they made a project that costed around 5 million Norwegian kroner. So the project was as follows. They put large mirrors on the mountainside so that those mirrors could uh, reflect sunlight and illuminate the town square. Another location of the movie that I really want to mention is Bergen, of course, because I'm living here. They actually covered like uh, some of the most important sightseeing objects and uh, I'm just going to try and list them. So the first one was Ulriken mountain. Ulriken is the highest of seven mountains that are surrounding the Bergen city and it is 643 meters high. Ulriken has an aerial tramway Ulriksbanen that can bring people to the top. At the top there is a TV tower, a restaurant and free telescopes. There is a network of trails along Ulriken which is a popular hike with several paths starting from steep to not so steep. And of course Brigen. I actually have already made a video about my first visit uh, in Brigen. That was like one of the first videos that I made about Norway so if you are interested make sure you check it out. And uh, of course, this is a legendary place, it's very historic. I truly enjoy walks there, I've been there now for several times and I would like to say that Bryggen is kind of like the face of Bergen. Bryggen is a series of Hanseatic heritage commercial buildings lining up the eastern side of harbour in the city of Bergen. 
The houses are traditionally made from wood and they are trying to keep the authenticity. During the years it has suffered from fires, however, reconstructed. Worth mentioning fact is that Brigan is actually on the UNESCO list of uh, cultural heritage since 1979. Another important uh, tourist destination I wanted to mention is in the scene where the boy and his mom are following Uncle Yunus and uh, this road is Atlantic Ocean Road. A unique stretch of a road which takes you right out to the ocean's edge. It is also known to be the world's most beautiful drive. It connects Averoy with the mainland via a series of small islands and islets spanned by a total of 8 bridges over 8,274 meters. The road was opened in 1989 and is toll free. The Atlantic Road has national tourist route status and the entire stretch between Bad and Christian Sand is one continuous experience packed with coastal scenery, culture and history. You can park your car at the design stopping places, climb a hillock and enjoy the salty air and the magnificent view. This would be like the most important and recognizable locations, touristy locations that were also locations for the movie called The Snowman. But if you are into details, there are some other places like maybe less uh, recognizable, less touristy, but these also could be very interesting for you, especially if you are into going to the places where the movies were shot or to the places that are related to the novel, if you have read it or you are intending to read it. So, Another place that's maybe not so touristy, like a destination, but also worth mentioning, is a restaurant Schroeder in Oslo. Uh, this place was mentioned not only in the novel, but also was used in the movie as the main character's Henry Hall's most favorite dining and drinking place. So they were actually filming the scenes uh, with the restaurant in this place. And uh, it is located not so far from the city's downtown. And the fact that you must know is that they serve traditional Norwegian food. And yeah, if you want to see the world from the perspective of Harry Hole and just to get the vibe of it, you're welcome to visit. Another place that's not like a touristy destination, but also worth mentioning if you are into the snowman and Harry Hole's uh, like footsteps is Oslo police uh, headquarters. It's located in Grönland in Oslo's east side and actually a lot of like drama and action is happening there because of course it's the working place of Harry Hall so he has to like hang out in his office. So I will probably not wish you to get there because nobody wants to get in a police uh, when visiting a foreign country. But uh, for the sake of interest, uh, you can just go there and see how it looks in real life. This is it for me today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you found some new places to put on your checklist when next time visiting Norway. Of course, if you have something to add, you are very welcome to write down it in the comment section. I will be very happy to discuss everything with you as always. Reminding that I am answering each and every comment. Yeah, I like discussions with you. And also I will be very happy to read in the comments what are your thoughts about the movie and also about the novel. So before I wish you a happy and positive and wonderful day, I uh, wanted to say that please make sure you have subscribed to the channel, that you have pressed the notification bell because I'm going to continue uh, these series of movies that were filmed in Norway. Also, make sure to check out the playlist that includes celebrities and musicians from Norway. And also, of course, the playlist that is dedicated to the wonderful Norwegian nature and my life here. So, that being said, have a nice day. See you next time!